Okay, guys, I just wanted to show you a couple of sales that happened. Um, this guest bag sold for $23. That's, uh, I don't, I mean, I started it at a dollar auction and it ended up with $23. Um, I mean, it's a really good leather bag. If I would have just preferred to keep it than let it go for $23, I honestly thought it would bring at least 30 to 40, but called it wrong. And I'm, my guess is that its shape is not really a classic shape. And also probably the gunmetal color is what kind of prevented it from getting more bids. But it is what it is. I made $2.50. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. This gift basket, um, if you guys remember, I bought a Pandora bracelet online. I did like a live stream on it. Um, and uh, this basket was included in that with a bunch of other stuff. Um, hold on, I'll show you something else that was included in it. This. Um, perfume sampler was also it was like this huge lot I paid $40 for for everything this perfume lot is something that we sell at our drugstore and basically you buy this I think it's like $90 and you get a, a deluxe sample of all these perfumes and then you can exchange it for a full-size bottle this is a $90 value so this was included in it that was included in it and a Pandora bracelet and a couple of other knick-knacky things but anyway um, getting off topic this sold for ten fifty. I'm considering it uh, entire profit because I mean I basically bought the Pandora bracelet for myself. Um, I think this is a Walmart brand. It's like white tea and linen kind of gift basket 13 piece. This Michael Kors I thought would sell for more but I mean there is some significant wear like that. But I mean regardless the the overall structure and condition of the bag is good. It sold for $50. I paid $30 so I made $20 on that. <laughs> Um, I'm telling you guys, I'm nickel and diamond. I am nickel and diamond when it comes to um, sales right now. Um, I have a few other actually things uh, that have sold. Uh, surprisingly, this bag, this Danny leather bag that we thrifted for $7.99, um, but I added the strap in for, I think this was $5. So total investment on this is eight plus five plus tax. So let's say $15. This one sold for $50 and that's, I was a little bit shocked about that. I mean, I mean, it's, I would have never expected for this bag. I mean, I think because of the shape of it and the, the, the leather and the hard, just the simplicity of it, the fact that it's Dan Yay leather. Let's talk about that one more, for one more second. Someone commented on my video that I'm an idiot because I keep saying Dam, Dan Yay and it's supposed to be Dam Yay. Ugh. Like some people are complete and utter dumbasses. I know what Dam Ye is. It's a pattern of LV. Dan Ye is a brand from a Canadian leather company. So get it right, whoever was commenting that idiot. <laughs> anyway, don't have time for people like that. Anyway, um, yeah, this one sold for 50. So, I mean, my profit on this was $35. Now that's the kind of profit I like to see. Anyway, guys, just a quick update for sales. I haven't listed this Lululemon yet, so we're probably going to list that soon. And yeah, just a little bit of a sales update for you guys. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of a nickel and diamond here. Profits aren't too good, but it is what it is. Um, I did sell this Michael Kors bag, the one with the, the three zipper with that. On my Depop for $110 US, they paid for shipping. Um, but Depop did take like $15, so really I sold it for like... I guess 100 which I think is a really good deal. I mean, it's not a factory outlet bag and it's also really good condition and really unique style. I was actually gonna keep it for myself and it was in my closet, but I ended up, you know, listing it high, but I mean fairly, but high and it sold. Um, so I'm gonna make like about, I think I paid, well, I'm not gonna make a lot of money on this. I'm, I'm only gonna make like $30, maybe $28, cause I did pay up for this. I did pay like $60 for this plus taxes, so. Yeah, I'm probably going to make like $25 on this. Um, this with the little kind of uh, little wallet that came, that uh, is fossil too. Um, this sold for $20. I paid $8 for this and I think $5 for this. Or maybe it was, yeah, maybe it was $8 for this, I think. So I'm going to only make like 4 bucks on this lot. I know. Was it hardly worth it? I don't know. I mean, lesson learned, right? I mean, it was fossil though. I figured... You know, but it is what it is. Um, this sold for $16. I basically am making about $13, $14. No, 
twelve dollars on this. It's a Polaroid camera. These have gone down significantly. These can you, before these used to come in like forty bucks easily. Sometimes you like more, but now it's gone down. And then this Daniel leather bag, I paid um, fourteen ninety nine plus tax, and then um, it sold for eighteen dollars. Oh my god. So I probably made like two bucks on it. So how much did I make here on this lot? I basically made two bucks. I made over here like four bucks. I made here like 12 bucks and here like 30 bucks. So, you know, and that's not even accounting my shipping supplies and my time going down to the post office. So I don't know. I, guess, I don't know. Maybe my skills are kind of going down a bit. But I mean, at least it's a profit, right? I guess a profit's a profit for now. But I don't know. <laughs> hardly makes it worth it sometimes but you know that's that's the life of a reseller sometimes you got to let some inventory go for lower than you want to go because you just want to get stuff out and get some money in and yeah that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes i want to show you guys a couple more sales that happened which weren't really big sales but um this bag that we got from plato's for 16 dollars it sold for 28 but i totally forgot that i had to buy the strap separately and that was another five dollars so in total i really just made two dollars and fifty cents profit on this bag and that strap which is uh it just kills me to have sales like that i mean sales are sales but when it's just nickel and diamond like that i feel like i feel like i'm a i just i just feel like i'm i'm worth more than that is basically what i'm trying to say um but i mean like i've said in previous sales updates sometimes that happens i mean i probably would have priced it higher if i remember that the strap was separate anyway it is what it is then we got this um fossil bag lot this was 12 dollars. this was i think 250 i made i believe oh where's my notes hold on it sold for 39 dollars for both of these and i made 23 dollars on this lot which is a little bit more acceptable anyway just wanted to update you guys Hi guys, it's Miss Philly. So I have two packages here. This is like the vegan leather bag that someone bought off my Depop and the Longchamp, um, a Piage Neal that I sold below what I paid. Um, we're at Chopper Drug Mart. They're going to close in about, um, well, the post office is going to close in about uh, five minutes. So we're trying to get get this all mailed out before, before they close. I just came out of the shower and... So... Thank you to the people who ordered this off my Depop. Um, the reason I'm selling my Le Pliage Neo is because I actually don't prefer the Neo in large. I prefer the Le Pliage regular in large. And then I think we might need to pick up some Kleenex and maybe some Perrier. So I'm looking through here, and I like to usually browse the clear, clear, clear section at Shoppers. Um, this dry shampoo is super, super good, but I don't need it. It's regularly $7.99, and it's $0.99. Cents. Um, but I did find, there's a dollar, um, this, Gillette Mach 3 Turbo for 5 bucks, and it's regularly $0.26. So I think we're going to grab that. We also have this Gillette for women, but I don't know how good... That one is. I usually like the men's razors because they just feel better. Cold and flu relief, six bucks. Um, Avino, three bucks, four bucks. Mm. Not that we need any of that. <laughs> oh, I got one of these and I really like them. It's like ten dollars. I like them a lot. I don't know. I don't know if I want to get another one, but. I mean, a lot of people neglect their feet, so maybe we'll get rid of them. That's it. We'll just get these two things. Hey guys, Miss Philly here. Okay, so we just mailed out our packages and we, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to the people who bought some stuff off my Depop. I do appreciate it. Um, if you're wondering, well, I kind of dabbled on it a bit. You're wondering why I sold my um, Le Pliage Neo in black. Uh, because I just don't see myself using it that much. I don't know. I just feel like it's too stiff and thick. Like the material, like even though the material is more durable than like the regular Le Pliage, 
it's more thicker i just feel i don't i don't know i just feel it's a little bit more heavier maybe i, I don't know i just there's, there's something about it i can't really pinpoint it and i, I tend to like the regular like pliages even though it's cheaper um not as thick material and not the treated leather well not the um, same matching handle as the bag but um i yeah i prefer these kinds of lip pliages not the neos i do like my small neo and i feel like um it's a little bit of a hassle to i don't know there's just something about it okay can't pinpoint it <laughs> i just prefer the regular uh black lip pliages so i might just get like a regular uh, black lip pliage the long like, the long handle one um, in large, yeah. So I think eventually we'll get that one. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. I don't feel like thrifting today, so it's not going to be like a thrifting video. Although I guess we could talk about thrifting topics or something of that sort. I'm. I was thinking of doing like an ebook. I don't know if that would be of interest to anybody, but I was thinking of doing like an ebook on obviously YouTube and thrifting and just put my own kind of little spin on it. I mean, there'll be information in it that would be already uh, readily available in my YouTube videos, but I think having it all collectively in one kind of format, which would be the ebook, I think would be better. Plus like some, maybe some, you know, some more secret information or tidbits or, you know, tips and tricks, whatever. I don't know yet. You know, I'm, I'm really just kind of, dab I've been like brainstorming. I was at the library and I was kind of just sitting there um, brainstorming on what kind of product that I wanted to offer to people because... I don't know, once you kind of uh, have a little bit of success on YouTube, I think the next step would be to offer a product to your viewers that would be beneficial and of interest and something that would be wanted. And I feel like information is something that people would want. I don't want to do merch. I don't want to do t-shirts. I don't want to do jewelry, obviously, because I'm, I'm not a jewelry channel or a fashion channel. Well, a little bit of a fashion, I guess, is related to thrifting, but I don't want to do jewelry. I don't want to do, you know, accessories, and I don't want to put my name on some t-shirt. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to do a iTunes song. I don't, you know, I just, I feel like the ebook is the way to go for, for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? If I ever did have merch, it would probably, it wouldn't be until I, I hit like in the hundreds of thousand subscribers, I think at least a hundred thousand. Cause I mean, you know, it just doesn't make sense to do it when you're, when you only have like 9,000 subscribers so far, but you know, I have ideas, you know, like I was thinking, you know, maybe little magnets with my little sayings on it, or maybe like a keychain with my sayings on it or little stickers. I don't know, just whatever, you know, like maybe a sticker that says no bueno or, uh, <laughs> you know, just things like that. Uh, but right now that's not in the works. I was thinking the ebook would be the way to go because I think a lot of people ask me things. A lot of people you know, ask me things like, how do you, how can you tell something is fake? Um, how do you clean your bags? Um, wh uh, what are the good brands to buy? Uh, what, you know, there's a lot of things that people ask me and I do answer them usually, not usually in the YouTube comments because it's, it's hard to keep up with the comments, but when they private message me on a Snapchat or Instagram, I, I always usually get back to them unless I miss it or accidentally delete it or something. But, uh, so I think that all this information would be very useful in an ebook. I pretty sure there are other people who have ebooks with this kind of information. Probably not the entirety of the information that I would include, but I mean, I would kind of put my own twist in it obviously with me being me <laughs> um with my little you know kind of quirkiness and sassiness to to the ebook and you know a little bit a little miss philly twist on it so if that's of interest to you let me know i mean it would be super cheap it'd be probably like a dollar 99 or 2.99 i don't know i guess it depends on how the length of the book and how i feel the quality of the information would benefit you um yeah, I wish it was an audible though. I wish I could do like an audible instead of an ebook because then it'd be like a long kind of uh, talking kind of thing. Or maybe I could do like a Vimeo. What do you guys think of that? Like maybe do my podcast on a Vimeo and then people would have to subscribe to it. And, and I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Is that kind of, does that make me look like a money hungry bitch? <laughs> I mean, I, I would still share information, like, obviously, in my YouTube videos, but I mean, I do, I do, I don't want to rely solely on YouTube, and you guys can kind of understand that, right? I mean, 
like let's be real YouTube income is up and down up and down you're not going to make exactly what you made last month and like granted for me it's been going up like every month but it's not guaranteed you know what if I get sick and I can't do videos what if you know something happens you know and it's not guaranteed so that's why I want to diversify my my streams of income like my really my primary 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 stream of income is YouTube my YouTube AdSense so like I do want to make sure and have it guaranteed that I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket when it comes to you know my finances and I feel like having it all relying on YouTube is just not a smart way of thinking but I also want to make sure that I don't come off as a money hungry how even though I am but you know, I'm not going to just peddle things out to you guys that are like of non non quality of non, you know, usefulness for you. That's why I was thinking of yeah, just doing maybe because like, have you got? Do you guys ever follow any of those astrological astrological psychics or tarot card readers on YouTube? And they do like a general reading and then you, when you want like an extended reading, they send you over to Vimeo and you kind of have to subscribe or like purchase the episode for like $2 or something like that. So like I was thinking maybe doing something like that, you know, where it's like I'll share like like very informative, useful information on thrifting and, you know, reselling and things like that. Not that I, I don't think that I'm an expert, but I would just share it from my perspective and my point of view. Anyway, let me know if that is in, of interest to you guys. I think maybe that would be my best bet because I don't know. I feel like ebooks are kind of played out sometimes, and you know, I feel like maybe Vimeo might be the way to go. I don't. I think it's called Vimeo, if I remember correctly. And yeah, so the, I've been really doing that a lot. I've been thinking a lot of of having multiple streams of income. Uh, I mean, the reselling has hit an all time low for me. Um, I feel like. I've been nickel and diming it. I mean, I haven't been 100% putting my all into it because of the videos I've been recording in YouTube. Not that that takes a lot of my time, but it also takes, you know, time regardless. And, you know, I have life to deal with as well. So it's not just, you know, so it's just trying to fit everything in and make time for everything. And I am telling you, that's really been my focus lately of the late is, is that is trying to come up with multiple streams of income, not just relying solely on YouTube. And like, let's like, aside from the YouTube income, I forgot I not, I'm not relying a hundred percent solely on that, even though that is my primary source. I do have the reselling as well, but reselling is basically nickel and diming for me at the moment. Like I, I kind of mentioned earlier before I got sidetracked. It's been very, very nickel and diming. Like sometimes I would, pro I'm, I wasn't making the uh, incredible amounts of profits I've been making in the, you know, yester months where it was like forty dollar profit per item, thirty, twenty. Like I would be happy with like a twenty dollar profit. I'd be happy with probably like a fifteen dollar profit. But sometimes it's been like an eight dollar profit, a two dollar profit, a you know ten dollar profit, which is you know I would accept a ten dollar profit as uh, successful as well. But when you put in the time of, you know, sourcing, the time of driving, the time of looking, the time of finding, which is looking, the find of paying, the find of, you know, just the, all your effort into finding the items, it eventually doesn't make it worth it. I mean, it is worth it to me because I do YouTube videos, but for the regular person who doesn't do YouTube videos, it just doesn't make it worth it for you because you're not making that good profit on an item is what I'm saying. So to me, like, even though I make a profit of $2 on one item, it, the footage is worth it for me because I am able to have something to upload onto YouTube. <sighs> but not everybody has YouTube. So, I mean, you have, I kind of have to look at it from their perspective as well. Well, where it's like, you know, what kind of information am I sharing you if it's not going to be valuable or if it's not going to be successful for you as well, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, um, reselling has been bottoming out a little bit it's I mean I did sell one bag a Daniel leather bag I paid eight dollars for it I added the strap which was another five dollars so I think I'm in it for fifteen dollars after taxes and it sold for forty six dollars so I made a thirty one dollar profit there and I haven't seen that kind of profit in a long time you know and I did sell an android box and made forty dollars there so I mean I had those two big quote-unquote sales um when it comes to Depop, 
I'm my, my I'm kind of median there. Uh, I'm making probably around uh, fifteen to twenty five dollar profit per item. So like I do get a lot of people who are trying to negotiate with me on things, but sometimes it's hard to do when my profit margin is already kind of at what I want it to be. I'm getting any any lower on that would not be worth my time because if you add in all the sourcing I did and finding the item and then my shipping supplies and then driving to the post office to mail it out, is it really worth it to sell it on Depop? Probably not, you know. So, yeah, so usually my Depop prices are negotiable to a point, negotiable to a point, but some, I would like to really get what I listed it for because I'm actually um, I actually kind of uh, incorporate the price of what I want already without any room for negotiation even though I do negotiate sometimes <sighs> anyway that's really what's been on my mind lately uh, I've been kind of like really stressed out with life in general and not to go into personal information because you know there's a lot of psychotic people out there trying to get in your business that has no bearing you know or caring for you whatsoever it's not like like the people who comment who genuinely care like not care and like you care about me you die for me i'm your rat and die but i mean the ones who genuinely care who like to watch you who have no kind of hateration toward you those are the kind of people i do want to share my information and life with but the fact of the matter is it's not like that at all you get the trolls and i've been getting a lot of trolls lately a lot of hater from people you know attacking me based on you know everything from my looks oh what is this under my nail gross <laughs> based on you know my looks my sexuality my gender my um lifestyle my financial situation my job like they they attack they're they're low blowers and the thing is you know i tend not to pay attention to people like that because i don't want to give them the time of day like i'll probably tell them to f off and i'll call them a name or two then block them so they can't get another word in edgewise but at the end of the day what they say you know does kind of you know sometimes sometimes affect you defend, depending on your mood and for me i'm lately i've been kind of stressed out so getting those kinds of comments or messages from people are kind of like uh whatever and i try to just ignore it and i don't even want to participate or kind of uh, invest any kind of energy into that but that's what kind of holds me back from sharing more with you guys if that if that makes sense if there was not that kind of people, if, if, if there wasn't people like that who are commenting and messaging me with that kind of nonsense, I would be like 100% an open book with you guys and share things because, but the fact of the matter is that's never going to happen. No, no, not everybody's going to like what you do. People are going to just be cowards and going to be ridiculous with how they're thinking because they're hiding behind a computer or a keyboard or even the ones who aren't. So some people have videos that are commenting that kind of nonsense with me and you know, I just, I would just rather not do that. Those few bad apples that are in the barrel ruin it for the whole lot of you that genuinely mean well. And it's sad that it has to be that way. But regardless, I will still be as much as I can be for you guys. And this video has been long enough. I've been talking, talking, talking. You're probably sick of my voice. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to get a booster juice because I need some sort of pick-me-up, uh, some sort of, you know, immunity boost and healthy shit to run through my body. Maybe that'll make me feel a little bit more peppy. Uh, I don't know what else we're going to do. I think that is it. I hope you guys are having a great day because uh, here it's, it's you know kind of fine it's i mean gen overall I'm, I'm doing good but you know this does a lot of this and sometimes this that does this makes you like this <laughs> if you guys can relate give this video a thumbs up um if you're not subscribed subscribe my video is my videos are mostly thrifting but i mean there's a little bit of miss philly sprinkle all over my videos so it's not going to be 100 percent about thrifting all the time but i love you guys have a great start to your week and we will see you in the next vlog i love you bye okay guys um so i'm doing a q a right now i kind of published it on my uh instagram i also published it on my snapchat so i'm waiting for questions to come in but i did get one question in from a member what's up girl <laughs> my bestie that i've never met yet um she asked what kind of qualities do i look for in a friendship 
uh, let's see. Well, obviously you have those qualities because even though we haven't met yet, um, I feel like I've bonded with you significantly. And right now you're probably like my top two, top three friends right now that I trust in and that I confide in everything, like everything. <laughs> I can't lie to you. But qualities I look for in a friendship, someone who can understand me, someone I can understand as well. I guess they would have to share my sense of humor because I am a little bit morbid. I can be a little bit out there and I can be a little bit too much to, for some people. Um, uh, there's only I can think of, aside from my best friend who passed away six years ago, there are only, aside from you, there are only other two people that share that kind of humor with me that get it no matter what, you know? So yeah, the qualities I look for are people that share the same humor as me, someone who understands me, someone who doesn't get easily offended over shit, and someone you can rely on. Because even though I do have some friends that do get me and understand me and my sense of humor, I find it sometimes hard to rely on them for things when it comes I mean in the end I can rely on them for big things but when it comes to day-to-day -day struggles and just wanting someone to be there uh, for you on the daily even though it's hard I guess for a friend to be there for you on the daily I just feel like they should be and I feel I'm lacking that lately and a man berm I feel like you've been there for me on the daily so I do appreciate that and of course I value quantity friendship over quality friend oh wait quality friendship over quantity friendship I'd rather um, have uh, yeah <laughs> oh, here's another one from Carlin Barr. What's your favorite healthy food? My favorite healthy food has got to be... What's my favorite healthy food? Healthy... Ooh, right now I'm really, really... I don't know if it's healthy, but I mean, it's kind of low-cal and I guess healthy. And it's not like you know, uh, fast food or fried or anything, but I do like, um, rice cakes. And then I put like tuna salad on top or egg salad on top. I find when I eat like five rice cakes and then the tuna salad on top or the egg salad, my caloric intake is about, I think 500 calories for just that one meal. And it's very filling because of the protein you get with the tuna and the egg. I don't do, I don't mix the tuna and the egg. It's either tuna salad on top of rice cakes or egg salad on top of rice cakes. With the tuna salad though, sometimes I like to put um, melted cheese on it or vegan cheese sometimes, even though what's the point of vegan cheese because it's tuna. But I put melted cheese on it. Um, I, I kind of ration the cheese into really, really, really thin slices so it's not overbearing when it comes to like fat intake and calories. And then I melt it in the oven and then I put seaweed over, like, um, like a seaweed paper over it. So it's kind of like sushi-ish, but not really. And it gives that sushi kind of taste which I love and it tastes yummy and when you melt it in the oven oh my god delicious delicious okay so we have another question coming in what is a question sorry what do you like about thrifting what do I like about thrifting okay hold on <laughs> What do I like about thrifting? Well, what I like about thrifting is the thrill of the hunt. I love that you can find things that you, you can find things at a deal at a substantially lower price than you would find retail. I love that you don't know what you're going in for. You just kind of find things. So, and I love that thrifting is I guess doing your part for the environment which is like you know recycled items that don't end up in the landfill which is always good for the environment right so I guess that's what I like about what's that's what I love about thrifting and you know I'm able to make an, a living off of it not just from reselling but also from YouTube because that is the subject matter of my YouTube <laughs> I'm actually heading home right now because there's someone who needs to pick up a bag for me, that Daniel leather bag that I was talking about earlier. She bought it for $46 and she's like, I'm coming now. And I'm like, oh my God, good thing I'm in like in the area because yeah, if it wasn't for the freaking $35 profit, I'd be like, yo ass needs to wait until I am home. But no, because sales are so low, I need my money and <laughs> I am at the mercy of my buyers. Um, and Chris said, will you ever reveal your real job? Um, reveal my real job. I mean, most people know it. If you've been following me for like a long time, then you know what my real job is. But I don't even want to talk about my real job because that to me is like the past, you know, and I'm trying to stray away from that. 
and focusing on my YouTube and my thrifting and my reselling and the other multiple streams of income that I had mentioned earlier. <laughs> so I don't know why people are so interested in my real job. It's just kind of like, you know, it's just, it's not even like a fancy or cool job. It's just like, you know, my, you know, it's like a fast food working at McDonald's or something. It's not interesting whatsoever. Okay. Oh, I didn't see the name, but someone asked, would you live anywhere else besides Winnipeg? Yes, I would live in Toronto because it's like the big city of Canada, but I would love, love, love to live in New York because I feel like I'm a New Yorker at heart. I wouldn't mind living in California either. Um, do you believe in, oh, hold on. I can't see that. I'll have to stop the video and look at that question because I missed it. So okay so reba asked um do you believe a before life and an afterlife i oh that's a good question i don't know if i believe a before life but it's weird that you asked that because i do have felt like sometimes i i know this sounds so narcissistic and so blowing shit up my ass but i feel like i was like an egyptian queen in a past life like i was really golden and bronzed and had like my headpiece and dripping in gold like I feel like <laughs> I, I I feel like that and I've also felt like I was living on a plantation. I don't know as what, but I just felt like I was live I'd been living on a plantation before and I don't know what I was or who I was, but maybe I was a southern belle, maybe I was something else, I don't know, but I feel very connected to southern culture and Egyptian kind of Okay, so Melissa5146 asked about my real job again, answered and answered and left. And then the other question she asked was, do you prefer if Value Village puts their good bags behind the showcase or do you prefer the thrill of the hunt? Well, for me, it depends. Most of the time, all the good shit behind the glass is usually like, um, like usually like uh, expensive as hell. So, I mean, that is what it is. Um, why is this Biatch parking behind me? So, yeah, so that's, um, that's the thing is like one day it's, uh, yeah, hold on. I think this person is supposed to pick up this Danny leather bag that we sold them. I think that's, um, money, 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 money. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so the question was, do you prefer them, the, 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 the bags behind the, the glass case, or do you prefer it Thrill of the Hunt? The Thrill of the Hunt is fun. It is harder to do. But when you do find a really good bag priced lower than what it would be behind the showcase, because everything in the showcase is expensive. Like, let's, let's be real, okay? Everything behind the showcase is expensive, usually. Um, so... It has to be a really good item, a really sellable item that you know, and it has to be an item that you have enough uh, profit margin for. And sometimes that's uh, that's not the case. You know, sometimes it's just priced way too much that there is no room for profit. But things that you find throughout the hunt, even though it's harder, you do get some satisfaction when you find something. But even then, like. I haven't had a really good find lately, a good find that's like, that made me a lot of money when it comes to handbags. Well, actually no, I'm, I'm, I'm lying. We had the, the Bottega Veneta items that I found that I haven't sold though. I did get a $150 offer on my Bottega Veneta wallet that I paid a dollar and 13 cents for, but I rejected it because I want my full $200 for that wallet. Okay. And it is worth it. Okay. So, um, I mean, a hundred and 49% profit on an item. Is that right? I'm bad at math, so I don't know. But, I mean, aside from those items, it's been kind of, when it comes to actually, like, getting the profit in my hand, it hasn't been really uh, uh, successful in that sort. Where, where, I mean, successful in the way where it's like, wow, I made this much money. Like the Tom Brown sweater that I sold, that I paid $11 for and sold for $200 or the um that brazilian bag that i paid i think it was 17.99 i sold it for like 120 us you know like things like that has been not i haven't a recent memory of anything that's garnered me that kind of profit lately 
Okay, so from Instagram, Ontario Yard Sale Junkie asked what makes me sad. Have I ever thought about, have I ever considered seeing my doctor? I don't know if she's trying to be funny or passive aggressive or serious, but I'll take it as serious. What makes me sad? I mean, I kind of dabbled it on my last video. I mean, life in general makes me sad. I mean, all the stresses that I have to go through. I mean, I guess the, the number one thing that makes me sad right now, I guess that trumps everything else is my self-reflection of how I feel about myself where I lack confidence and I lack uh, self-esteem and I and I have uh, maybe some body issues and, and weight issues. I think that's probably the number one thing that is stressing me out lately. I mean, I have succeeded in, in weight loss. I have lost a significant amount of weight, but I, I still look at, I look at myself as not, how, how do I say this? How do I word this? I have been successful in my weight loss, but I'm not even halfway to where I want to be. And I guess if you count, if you, if you take into account my, what's going on with my hair here? <laughs> if you take into account the time it's taken to lose all that weight, if you take into account that I have so much more to go, so much more to lose, a long way to go still, I guess that's what stresses me out because it has been a hard journey with the weight loss. I've had a lot of ups and downs and roller coaster um, fluctuation and it's a struggle to find things to eat that are low calorie yet healthy and then taking the time also to work out which I'm usually on top of the working out I think it's the food that I struggle most with and yeah it's not like I'm not freaking living in a war-torn country I'm not you know having some you know serious disease I'm not homeless I'm not you know abused I'm not so many things are you know on that scale of being sad about is not happening to me but like i've said over and over again regardless of the view of the importance of your sadness it doesn't uh, it doesn't it doesn't take away from the fact that it's still your feelings and what you're sad about you know so i don't think that people should minimize it or disregard it because it's what you're feeling and to you it's important and that's what's the most important thing it's it's you and how you feel but not to get so super super deep yeah i guess that's what i mean there are other things too that are high on the scale of why i am feeling sad at the moment but i don't really want to get into it because i just don't really feel like it um, but i mean if you follow me on instagram and my insta stories you probably know so and i've talked about it in other videos so yeah and also, do I want to see a doctor about being sad? Not really, because I don't think I'm at that point where I need a doctor. Um, there were points in my life where I felt like I needed a doctor to, to help or like a, maybe like a counselor or a therapist. And to be honest, I think a therapist and a counselor is beneficial to everybody. I think, you know, if you, one can afford it, it's very, very... Uh, I think it's a really good way of progression, something that's productive, something that's positive, because sometimes it's nice to talk to someone who doesn't have, who doesn't know you, who doesn't have a preconceived notion about you and who you are. This person, the, psych the psychiatrist or the therapist or the counselor is getting to know you, so they have that kind of perspective, a fresh and new and an outlook of you without having any kind of predetermination of who you are. And I know a lot of successful people who have successful people who do have counselors and who do have therapists who do have life coaches and I think that it's very valuable and once I can afford to get one I will definitely have one because it's very I think it's very very valuable because you can only talk to your friends so much you can only talk to your spouse so much and your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your parents or your sister and brother I mean sometimes people that you confide in want to listen 
sometimes they don't give the best advice. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't care because they're going through their own shit. Like a lot of people are going through shit in their life, okay? So if someone's going through shit and you're asking about your shit and they're trying to get over their shit and it's just a whole big freaking shit storm. You know? It's nice to have like a professional or someone who specializes in that field confide in you and, you know, steer you in the right direction. And hopefully, you, you know, I don't think that they actually steer you in the right direction. I think they steer you uh i think they give you clarity and you're the one that steers you in the right direction they just help you they're kind of like that stepping stone of of clarity so joshie michael asked me what is my favorite luxury brand and why my favorite luxury brand i mean huh that's a little difficult um i think generally i think louis vuitton would be my favorite luxury brand even though i've actually owned more chanel than louis vuitton i think louis vuitton is a little bit more versatile um i think they're not really well known for their clothes but i, I like a lot of their clothes like men's and women's but i think that their their bags are just really classic i do i really love the monogram print of louis vuitton and it just stands out it's just kind of like bam and it's nice and it's you know i mean it's older than chanel so it's been around a hell of a lot longer i believe and i do love chanel too i do love their bags but i think chanel is just kind of it can be a little bit hoity-toity and a little bit kind of um i don't know a little bit snotty you know but with louis vuitton it's like it's luxury and you know it's luxury but you can come off as casual and personable wearing louis vuitton when you're wearing a chanel bag you'll be like I, f I feel like you'll be like step up bitch i'm somebody but with louis vuitton you're like you know it's more it's more versatile and very kind of casual and it can be hoity-toity but it can be casual as well it's not like chanel it's like 100 percent hoity-toity anyway yeah i do like louis vuitton a lot and i would like to have more pieces from them and yeah <laughs> so joshi michael also asked me what is your most thrifted brand my most thrifted brand um i guess it would be i see a lot of michael kors and coach so i think those are my two really big thrifted brands and i mean that kind of speaks for itself i guess if it's my most thrifted brand it means that it's the most brand that people are donating so maybe they're getting rid of it because they don't like it no more maybe they've you know maybe they've uh maybe they've what do you call it uh ascended to a higher brand or more you know maybe they outgrew the brand but yeah but to be honest i see more coach 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 galore i see coach everywhere when i'm thrifting whether it's at plato's closet or value village salvation army goodwill it's always coach and it's kind of unfortunate because i think coach is a great brand i think they've kind of i think that they cheapened themselves with the outlet kind of thing i mean you know there's a lot of brands that have outlets gucci has an outlet salvatore ferragamo has an outlet chanel has a freaking outlet but and maybe that's the reason why i like louis vuitton because louis vuitton will never have no outlet but yet chanel has an outlet okay but you know burberry has an outlet versace has an outlet prada mew mew all have outlets where was I going with this? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Coach having its outlet and designing pieces for the outlet, I think cheapens the brand immensely. And that's why I kind of was kind of like coach, you know, but if when it comes to their boutique bags, oh, they got some nice shit, girl. I didn't even go front with you. Okay. They have some nice pieces. Like I thrifted, thrifted, even though it was $75, but I mean, it is cheaper than boutique bags, but I got that bag, that new bag that I got, the leather one from Style Encore that was $75, $80 after taxes, but I still think it's really reasonable since it came with its dust bag. It's leather, not factory outlet, also had the top handle and the, um, the shoulder strap, and it's really roomy and big, and I just like the way it fell on my body, uh, so yeah they do have a lot of nice pieces i haven't really been excited for a coach bag uh in a while but i do know like some of their boutique bags like i was talking to thrifter by design she's on youtube as well um she just had she just unboxed a video on her channel of a really nice uh boutique bag that that she got from coach and um i think i forgot what line is it their regal line or i think that's what she said but also their glove tanned leather line had really nice pieces and 
their bags, their, uh, their um, boutique bags and their older bags that came out made in USA are such high quality. The leather is phenomenal and durable. I have one bucket bag from there that I will not let go of because it is just so durable, so nice. Um, but yeah. I that is the brand that I find a lot of is coach for the most part I mean there are other you know cheaper brands I find like guess guess is another brand that you see a ton of Betsyville Betsy Johnson uh what else Le Chateau and Aldo so those other mall kind of brands are there too but for the most part when it comes to designer coach all the way is what I find the most at the thrift store okay so Tori Scad on Instagram asked me what is my biggest turn on and turn off with a guy well my biggest turn on would have to be I guess his mm, uh, uh, I mean okay if I'm attracted to a guy well we won't like talk about physical attributes we'll th we'll talk more about like them in general we won't talk about teeth or eyes or body or face because if you're turned on by a guy then obviously you're physically attracted to them though right so I guess my biggest turn on with a guy is number one if it's like a physical attribute or something like tangible it would have to be his smell whether it's his own kind of personal smell or the cologne that he's wearing that's a number one also um the cleanliness of his fingernails if you have dirty fingernails that is a big 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 turn off for me because i mean if you can't even keep your fingernails clean what else on your body you ain't keeping clean i mean a nice teeth but i mean a nice nice teeth and nice smile obviously but you know that is a physical attribute and that's something that can always be fixed so it's not like something i fixate on but smell his uh, dirty fingernails hopefully clean fingernails and I think also him being a gentleman if he's a gentleman to you if he's cordial if he has some um, chivalry I think that is a huge turn on like if he opens your door if he walks you to the door if he checks up on you to make sure you're fine I think that is amazing and there's less guys like that who genuinely care so if you have a guy like that consider yourself lucky Okay, we have one last question in. Um, Anthony from Snapchat asked me, if you could create your dream man, who would it be? Or what would it be? I guess my dream man would be, he would have a job. It doesn't matter if he worked at McDonald's or if he worked at a gas station or if he was a lawyer or a doctor. As long as he had time for me. And because my, my firm belief is people make time for things that matter to them. So if your guy is not making time for you, or if he always has excuses, like he doesn't have time or, you know, he's busy, that's, that's, that's just what it is. It's, it's an excuse. Like I said, you make time for what's important to you. You make time for people that matter. So having no time is an excuse and it's not a valid one. That's number one. Someone who is a nice guy, someone who treats you right. I'm all about chivalry. I love a guy who's chivalrous. A guy who I'm attracted to and there's no one specific look for me I know I always talk about sexy white boyfriends but to me it could be a Spanish boyfriend it could be a, a black boyfriend a brown boyfriend an Indian boyfriend a freaking uh, alien boyfriend you know as long as he's anatomically correct but no seriously um, I just want a guy who is a good person who treats you well who is independent well it doesn't have to be independent if he lived in his mama's basement that's fine too as long as he's working towards something you know someone who has goals someone who doesn't have to rely on validity from other people someone who is not full of himself someone who is caring uh someone who is a team player and someone that is good to you and good for you i guess that's gonna wrap it up for the questions there's actually not many questions coming in i don't know maybe because people are busy but whatever that is what it is i'm glad i got to answer some of your questions the ones that got it in i will see you guys in the next vlog if you do have any other q a questions leave it in the comments below and maybe i'll do a part two in the next vlog bye